Good morning. Welcome students to another unit. Unit number four, EMI and AC. Now, the first question today, if the resistance R in circuit A, there are two parts of this diagram, A and B, circuit A of the figure be decreased what will be the direction of induced current in B? See, uh, here you have been given a resistor which is variable in nature. That means the value of this resistance can be changed. As the resistance changes, the current can either be increased or decreased. According to the equation, the current is decreasing. Now, what will be the direction of current in this loop B? See how you solve this. Now, in the question it's given that the current as it is flowing in an anticlockwise sense is decreasing. So, if current in A, that is the circuit, decreases, we know there will be a change in magnetic flux. This change in magnetic flux will be associated or linked with the circuit or the loop which is alongside B, the second one. And accordingly there will be an induced EMF and therefore a flow of current because this part is closed according to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. There must be an induced EMF and a current flowing since the circuit is closed. Now the question is if the current decreases, Lenz's law, as you know, determines the direction of flow of current and also the nature of EMF developed. So if the current in this, if it is I, if it decreases, then certainly students, the current should be flowing in such a way in the second one so as to oppose the cause. And what is the cause, students? The cause is decreasing current and decreasing magnetic field. If you see carefully, if we wish to not allow the current to decrease by inducing certain amount of EMF, the current in B has to be flowing in a clockwise sense. Right? It has to be flowing in a clockwise sense. So as to oppose this decreasing magnetic flux and induced EMF. So thus, the current flowing in this B part will be in a clockwise. If the current decreases in A, induced EMF in B and hence a current Hence, the current should be in opposing nature which forces It should be in clockwise direction. Right? This is the reason, the answer. Direct outcome of Lenz's law. The second question today. How would one detect the presence of magnetic field on an unknown planet? Suppose you happen to be in a planet which you do not know. You land up on a planet which you do not know about its properties. And you wish to know whether this planet has a magnetic field uh, like many others like the one we dwell in. So how do you use the concepts of physics? to determine whether the planet has a magnetic field or not. 
will be using the concepts of electromagnetic induction. The simple way is to say have a coil, could be a number of turns, as many number of turns as you wish, more number of turns would be better. And then you connect this with a galvanometer. Right? Connect this with a, with a galvanometer. This is the coil C. What you do is, you turn this coil, hold this coil and the galvanometer, you turn this coil in various directions. Since rotate, you could rotate it about any axis, different various axis. If there is a deflection in the galvanometer, then you surely know that there is some kind of magnetic field. How? As you rotate this coil physically, then if there is a presence of magnetic field or magnetic lines of forces, those lines of forces are going to change. That means the flux, magnetic flux, will change with this coil on rotation because if you keep it stationary, probably it might not because if it's a fixed magnetic field at that particular place, it might not change. But if you rotate it, then definitely the magnetic field will change. The flux changes with time. According to Faraday's laws, it will definitely induce an EMF across its terminals and since you have connected a galvanometer and the circuit is closed, the galvanometer will definitely show some readings. If you turn it in opposite direction or in any other direction, the galvanometer might show a different reading in a different direction. So this is the simplest way of finding out whether a planet or whether a place, be it a planet or any other place, has at least any magnetic field or not. So how do you do this? Basically, rotate the coil, rotate a coil connected with a galvanometer. The galvanometer should be sensitive one. If the galvanometer shows any reading, galvanometer shows any deflection or readings, it shall confirm the presence of of magnetic field. It's the presence of magnetic field. Right? This is the simplest way you can determine. That is it. The next question today. A coil of wire of certain radius has 600 turns and a self-inductance of 108 milli henry. What will be the self-inductance of a similar coil which has 500 turns? Right, once again, this wire is wound in form of a coil which is having 600 turns and since it's a coil, it will be having a self-inductance and the value of self-inductance is 108 milli henry. What will be the self-inductance of a similar coil? Means a similar coil that means it has to be made up of the same wire and the same area of the same length which is having 500 tons. Right? Let's see. Uh, students, if you remember self-inductance of a coil, the formula for self-inductance of a coil is given by if L is the self-inductance L equals to mu naught n square A by L, where mu naught stands for the permeability, n is the number of turns total, A is the area of the cross section CS, and L is the length of the coil. So, this is the expression. Now, since according to the question, mu naught is not changing, similar conditions. 
the area since it's a similar coil so the area is also not going to change the length is also not going to change only the number of turns changes so out of these four terms one two and three these three are constant so we can safely write that the self inductance of the coil is directly proportional to the square of the number of turns right now what are given the first thing is let us say the for the first n1 is 600 turns the value of n2 is 500 turns right got it now and the value of the self inductance for the first coil is given as 108 milli henry we know use this formula l2 by l1 rather a modified form that is equals to the squares that is c l2 by l1 will be equals to n2 square by n1 square directly following from this expression now that is l2 equals to n2 is how much 500 square n1 is equals to 600 that is square multiplied by l1 and l1 is equals to how much 108 milli henry it's easy for you to solve this if you solve this the value comes out to be around 75 This is how you solve. Even if you do not have the length, even if you do not have the area, you'll still be able to find out the self inductance if the number of turns are changed, keeping the length and the area of cross section constant. The next question today. The magnitude of electric current is increasing from A towards B. What is the direction of the induced current in the loop? It's a similar question. We'll explain it in terms of the increasing flux, Lenz's law and all. So there is a loop, closed loop, and there is a straight current carrying wire. The current in this is increasing from A to B. That means it's flowing from A to B, left to right. Now, what should be the direction of the induced current in this loop, either clockwise or anticlockwise? See how you actually analyze and find it out. Suppose you use the thumb rule, grip rule, whatever. If you use this rule and find out the magnetic field associated with this loop due to the current carrying wire, you will find that it would be perpendicular out should be out associated with this loop now if the current is increasing along AB then the magnetic field perpendicular out is increasing but what does Lenz's law say this change in magnetic flux would produce an induced TMF and hence an induced current so as to oppose the cause what's the cause the cause is a increasing magnetic field directing outwards an increasing magnetic field directed outwards the opposite of it should be a magnetic field generated or the current flowing in such a way that the magnetic field or the flux generated due to that induced current should be opposite to the original direction of the magnetic field. So if it's outward due to AB, the current flowing in this should be such that the magnetic field generated should be inward and for this inward, you should have a clockwise sense of current. So the current flows in the clockwise sense. This is how you answer it uh, using thumb rule. The direction of current, the direction of magnetic field
magnetic field due to AB is perpendicular outwards right to oppose this the current in the loop should be in the clockwise sense this is the answer the next question today students sketch a graph to show how the reactance of a capacitor and second, an inductor varies as a function of frequency. A relatively commonly asked question, but still, uh, let's see. Now, for a capacitor, we know students, Xc, that is a reactance, is inversely proportional to the frequency, right? 1 by 2 by nu c. So it's inversely proportional. And for any inverse related curves this should be the nature of the curve so you should be plotting the frequency in the depend independent one and x c in the dependent axis so this is how the value of the impedance of sorry reactance of a capacitor varies with the frequency now for the second one, this was the first one, for the second one, an inductor, XL, L stands for the inductor, in this case the frequency is directly proportional, 2 pi nu L. So in this case, the curve would be taking a shape somewhat like this. It should be a straight curve, as straight as possible, possibly you can draw in freehand. Okay, so much straighter now. This is the frequency and this is XL. So these are the two variations. This is a linear variation, this is a non-linear variation. Please remember the natures of the variation. This is important. 